Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over CSS terminology, syntax, and use. Okay, so you've got a page created, and whenever you start making your web pages, I'm going to want you to focus on the HTML side of things. That's where you set the structure, that's where you put in the content. Now, early on in the process, you might start styling, but really, um, a lot of your styling is going to occur after you get content and the layout in there. And that content, by the way, could be temporary text content to kind of get a feel for how much text is going to be in the page. But we want to start to change the look of this page. And it started years ago when uh, CSS came out in the late 90s. But the whole idea is that we have this separate language that controls the look and the layout of our page so we no longer have to embed styling characteristics in with the HTML. Now a few of you might remember um, at one time you could put in elements like the center tag and you could surround content with a set of centering tags. And if I check this out in my browser you'd be pleasantly surprised. Oh, fantastic, it centers stuff. Cool, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, but this is uh, this element, this set of tags here, became deprecated or phased out many years ago. Now I know you're thinking, man, it still seems to be working just fine though, why not use it? But you want to avoid putting style characteristics mixed in with the HTML. You want to separate style from structure, style from content. And there are many more benefits to separating those things as opposed to the benefits of mixing them all together. So then that's where CSS comes into play. In order to use CSS properly starting off, you really need to know about the uh, terminology and the syntax for CSS. Terminology is not too not too tough, but it is different than HTML. So in HTML, we have elements, and an element is made up of a, generally, it's made up of an opening tag and a closing tag. Opening H1 tag, closing H1 tag. Sometimes in our HTML tags, we use attributes, and those attributes contain values. So the terminology for HTML are elements, tags, attributes, and values. CSS is similar in that it has key terms, but they are different terms. Let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, for my first example here, I'm going to include some styling right inside of the head section of the page. This is called using internal styles or embedded styles. Some folks may call it embedded. I tend to say internal styles. Internal styles go in the head section of the page and they go in between an opening and closing style tag. Okay, So in between these two tags are where we, are, is where we're going to put in our style instruction. So the first word you need to know is a rule. Okay, So a CSS rule. In fact, I'm going to do this as a comment. By the way, this is how you do a CSS comment. Okay, CSS rule is a chunk of CSS declarations for a particular selector. So already I'm using some other terms you may not be aware of, so let's try these out. And our first example, let me go ahead and mess around with this headline one. So my CSS rule is made up of multiple things. There is a selector, okay? So the very first thing I write for a CSS rule is a selector. And then I do an opening curly braces. And then after that, I can put in any number of properties. And let's do one really easy. I'll do the text align property, colon, and then I do a value for this property. Um, I'll go ahead and do center, and then a semicolon. And then I need a closing curly braces. There we go. So this is a complete CSS rule that will center my headline one. Now if I save this, head back over to my browser and refresh, my headline is still centered. Of course, it was centered before from that um, center tag. Let's try a couple more property value combinations. How about um, color? We'll do a medium shade of blue. And let's also change the font. There we go. So I've made a few changes here. And now we can start to see 
that this headline is clearly different. So now we have a complete CSS rule. And just so we're clear, a CSS rule is made up of a selector, and then it's made up of one or more properties. We'll just do it like this, and that property might have a value. And then I'll just do a few of them to represent that we can have more than one. And then a closing set of curly braces. There we go. So a selector, properties, and values. Now, together, properties and values are a declaration. So in my first CSS rule up here, I have three declarations. Each declaration is made up of a property and a value. And of course, the big tough thing about CSS is knowing all the different properties you can use. And there's some that have been around for a long time that you're probably pretty familiar with. These are all pretty old ones that I'm demonstrating right here. But there's also some very new ones with CSS3 and even more coming out as we speak. But this is the basics of a CSS rule. The selector is what you want to manipulate. The properties are what you want to change about that element. I want to change its text alignment, its color, its font family, and of course the values for each property indicate what about that property you want to, you know, what you want that property to be. Now some properties like text align have a very limited number of choices. Left, right, center, um, justify is one of them. Color, of course, has many, many millions of properties because obviously there's a different color code for all the for the 16.7 million colors you can create. So there's a great number of values you can use for the color property. Similar for font family, there's lots of fonts out there, although you might see the same dozen over and over. There's lots of values you can use for a font family property. But that's the basics for CSS syntax and terminology.